Independence Day is celebrated in India on February 28 every year commemorating the discovery of the Raman effect by Sir C V Raman on February 28 1928 even after 83 years of his path breaking study on optics and scattering of light researchers across the world are still extracting new results from his discoveries Raman effect has continuously impacted every field of science and its role in spectroscopy medical diagnostics and material characterization has been phenomenal professor raman was born on the 7th of november 1888 in tiruvannaikavel near tiruchirappalli his mother's name was parvati ammal and father's name was chandrashekhar ayer who was a school teacher raman was his second child when raman was 3 years old his father joined the mrs avian college at visakhapatnam andhra pradesh as lecturer in mathematics and physics he was a great lover of music raman matriculated at the age of 11 at 13 he won a scholarship and joined the presidency college in madras in 19 He passed his BA examination, winning the first place and the gold medal in physics. Raman was an extraordinary observer. At 16, while doing a routine experiment on his college spectrometer, he observed some diffraction bands. Raman's observations in that routine experiment constituted the subject of his first research paper. which was published by one of the most prestigious scientific journals of that time namely the philosophical magazine when raman completed his ba education it was suggested that he go to england for further studies however he was rejected since the civil surgeon of madras did not find him to be physically fit to go to england in 1907 He gained his MA degree, obtaining the highest distinctions. Around that time, he saw a 13 years old girl playing the Tyagaraja Kirtana on the veena. Against all conventions of that time, he arranged his marriage with her. Her name was Lokasundari. In 1907, when Raman was just over 18 years old, he went to Calcutta. to join the finance department there as assistant accountant general even as professor raman was working for the accounts department in calcutta he found time to do research in the indian association for cultivation of sciences it was founded by mahendra lal sarkar doing research in his spare time and that too with very limited facilities raman could publish his research findings in leading international journals like nature the philosophical magazine and physics review raman had excellent organizational capacity and had a great vision for the future of science in india he started a bulletin of the indian association this bulletin grew in 1917 into a full science journal known as the indian journal of physics He would get interested in everything he observed. He would then go into the roots and attempt to understand the mechanism which governed the observed phenomena. Raman followed up the recitations he heard his father play on the violin by his papers on the bowed string, the struck string, the maintenance of vibrations on resonance, the sounds of splashes, and on music from heated metals. This by no means is a complete list of his research interests even in the field of sound and music alone. He discovered the overtones in the sounds of the mridangam and the tabla, thoroughly analyzed them and showed how the richness of these percussion instruments is so much superior to the normal stretched membrane of the western drums. Professor Raman during that period published a beautiful paper on the acoustical knowledge of the ancient hindus and had already become an international expert on sound and musical instruments in 1919 raman joined as palit professor in physics at the calcutta university once during his sea voyage to europe raman was
was struck by the blueness of the sea. Many of us believe that the blueness of the sea is due to the blueness of the sky. Professor Raman did a simple experiment on his European voyage while on the ship and found that the blueness of the sea was not merely the blueness of the sky seen by reflection. Rather, the blueness of the sea was due to molecular scattering by the waters of the ocean. On returning to India, Raman initiated research on three different lines. The scattering of light by liquids, the scattering of x-rays by liquids, and the viscosity of liquids. Professor Raman's work on the scattering of light by liquids was the one discovery which fetched him and our country the Nobel Prize in Physics and came to be known as the Raman Effect. It involves an exchange of a quantum of energy between a molecule and the electromagnetic radiation. His confidence, determination, working towards specific goals got him Nobel Prize. In 1922, Professor Raman published a monograph entitled The Molecular Diffraction of Light. Other investigations carried out by Raman were his experimental and theoretical studies on the diffraction of light by acoustic waves of ultrasonic and hypersonic frequencies and those on the effects produced by X-rays on infrared vibrations in crystals exposed to ordinary light. In 1948, Raman, through studying the spectroscopic behavior of crystals, approached in a new manner fundamental problems of crystal dynamics. His laboratory has been dealing with the structure and properties of diamond, the structure and optical behavior of numerous iridescent substances, feldspar, opal and pearls. Among his other interests have been the optics of colloids, electrical and magnetic and isotropy, and the physiology of human vision. He believed that the future of any country rests with its accumulated knowledge and younger generation. Sir C. V. Raman observed, If you ask me what is the greatest industry of a nation, the key industry, I have no hesitation in saying that it is the production and diffusion of knowledge. There is no nobler work for a man or in an institution than to bring up a young generation in health and strength and in the vigor of intellectual and physical activity. In 1924, Professor Raman was elected as a fellow of the Royal Society. He was conferred a knighthood by the British government in 1929. He received the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1930. The government of India awarded him the title of Bharat Ratna in 1954 and the erstwhile Soviet Union honored him with the International Lenin Prize. Some of the other awards or honors received by Raman were Martinki Medal of the Society Italiana della Scienzia of Rome, Hughes Medal of the Royal Society of London, and Franklin Model of the Franklin Institute of Philadelphia. Raman loved children and he derived immense pleasure in showing them his museum and the laboratories of the Raman Research Institute. He believed that the true wealth of a nation consists not in the stored up gold in its coffers and banks, not in the factories, but in the intellectual and physical strength of its men, women and children. Towards the end of his life, Raman chose to make himself a recluse. To Raman, scientific activity was the fulfillment of an inner need. His approach to science was one of passion, curiosity and simplicity. It was an attempt to understand. To him, science was based on independent thought. Combined with hard work, science was a personal endeavor, an aesthetic pursuit and above all, a joyous experience. Raman believed that science can be promoted only by doing it. Raman died on November 21st, 1970. As per his desire, he was cremated in the gardens of his institute. After Sir C. V. Raman, our nation has produced Nobel laureates like Har Gobind Khurana, Subramanyam Chandrasekhar, Venkataraman Ramakrishna in the field of science. A nation like India 
now with a population of 1.2 billion people, has the potential to produce more Nobel laureates and our nation awaits for the next to continue the legacy of great ones like Sir C. V. Raman.